Hi there, and welcome to another video from Parker Adams Boat Sales. I'm Jonathan Parker, and... I'm Andrew Adams. And we are here today on a 2012 Beneteau GT38, and it's a really, really nice boat. Um, I have to say, one of the things that I really like about the Beneteau 38 and the whole series of the Gran Turismo is that they've done something a little bit different than a lot of the manufacturers. If you look back at the older Targas, etc., actually they don't look a lot different than some of the more modern sports cruisers. But what Beneteau have done is they've changed the design a bit. They've got a centre um, helm position, they've got a much, much larger area here, and just lots of nice features down below. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and Benito have done something different, haven't they, from Definitely. the norm. And it yeah, really will show you all the features of this boat has to offer. Um, I'm going to show you some of the machinery and under the hull. This boat's actually out of the water at the moment. And normally we prefer to do them in the water, don't we? Yep. But actually, it's a really good opportunity to see this special hull shape. So stay tuned, because that, um, that's actually um, going to be a really interesting point, because this actually has a stepped aerated hull. And I'm going to show you that. And I'm also going to show you, because the stern drives are removed, um, what is actually um, the transition from the transom shield to the stern drive, so that'll be really interesting as well. It's a nice opportunity, really, for your engineering background. We can so because a lot of people talk about, you know, when you service out drives, the bits and bobs of, of the out drives. But Jonathan will actually point out what each of them are. Yeah, absolutely. And then in terms of the rest of the boat, um, as you'll be able to see here down below, you've got loads and loads of light. You've got a really nice light cabin. Uh, in the front cabin, you've got lots and lots of space. You've also got these big windows which run down either side. And in the rear cabin, you've got full width um, space here. So you enter in the middle, but then if you look either side, you've got these cutouts into the hull, and um, which just gives you this feeling of spaciousness throughout the whole boat. It's 38 foot, but I think it feels much, much bigger. So excited to bring you this walkthrough tour. I think we're going to start outside, are we? We can go down below to the hull? Yes, OK, let's do that. Cool. actually in the process um, of being polished and being anti-fouled so in the midst of it here and also the engines and stern drives are being serviced so we're actually in the midst of all the work but I wanted to take the opportunity to show you um, the hull so as we can see it's um, black anti-foul and normal chimes we've got a five blade bow thruster in there all pretty normal um, the anti is in pretty good shape, it just needs a bit of TLC from the patches before it then gets repainted. Um, but as you see, it all looks pretty normal until you get to here. And this is about two, three quarters of the way down. Um, and then once we get to here, you might be better off coming behind me, Andrew. There's a huge step in the hull. And as we go a bit further up, there's actually two holes underneath here. Now this is Beneteau's air step technology. It's painted by Beneteau. And if we go shoot back out, if we look on the side of the hull, there's a stainless steel air duct. And I first saw this and I thought, well, surely that's pointing the wrong way. You know, water and, you know, we'll get in there on a heavy sea, but that's actually an air scoop. The air comes through, gets forced through down into into the, out of the hull here, and then it gets forced underneath the hull. And what that actually then does is aerates this whole back section. So effectively creates an air cushion, which reduces friction. So what that will do, it, in, in fact, it almost makes the hull a shorter hull than it actually is because this back part is aerated. So there's less friction. Um, so you get better performance and better economy. Um, it's really good design and the reports that we've seen um, seem to prove that fact and um, some of the motorboat monthly um, reviews on it have also shown that actually it really does work and it really helps performance getting on the plane when once you're planing um, at reducing friction and giving you better economy so really clever as we go around the back uh, i just want to show you these trim tabs so these are Volvo Penta automatic trim tabs. And you can see they're not like conventional ones. If you look on just over here, these are conventional ones. So you have a big stainless steel tab and a big hydraulic ram. And these tend to get weeded up, they get covered in weed, and also they're prone to failure and leaks from the ram. But Volvo's one is just made of, made of plastic and it's a blade that drops down. 
Now these are automatic as well, so they'll automatically drop up and down. You can use them manually if you need to. And of course there's one either side. Um, very good system, works very well. And uh, the other thing as well is the stern drives are removed. And um, these are Volvo Penta 260 horsepower D4s in here. And the stern drives um, are DPH drives. Um, but what they are is they actually steer independently of one another. So these are actually the steering arms and you have a set for each side. If they weren't independent of each other, they'd only have a steering arm on the port and starboard and then there'd be a bar connecting the two drives together. But these don't, they have two steering arms on each side. Um, and that enables then the joystick control. So this is a joystick controlled boat um, to actually move the drives independently and in doing that, um, it'll actually, you can move the boat into whatever direction you want it to do. So if you want to spin it round, if you want to move sideways, um, the drives will move and enable you to do that. Very clever system, and I'm excited to see this work in practice when the boat's back in the water. Um, the other interesting thing, while it's off, I can actually show you, because you very rarely get to see, um, these are the bellows. So everyone talks about changing bellows, and the drive, as two, as you can see, one is for the universal joint. So that's basically the drive shaft that comes from the engine into the stern drive, and it has a joint on it. So as you lift the drive or turn it from side to side, it can angle like this. And so this has to be changed biannually, so every two years, because basically because of the perishing of the rubber and any degradation on the stainless steel clips. The lower one is actually an exhaust bellow. So this is the exhaust um, and water will come through here and then out of the stern drive. This pipe here is actually the water intake because the engine sucks the water in through the stern drive, up through the drive, into here, and then all the way up to the engine. So another very important one, you don't want to come off. And then what we have here is the two hydraulic rams to lift the drive up and down. Um, and you can see they're quite small, um, but that's enough to lift and pull the drive down um, at speed. And the final thing is actually this cable here. And this is the control cable to put the gearbox um, in and out of gear. So believe it or not, um, it has electronic controls, but it operates still a cable system inside the engine bay. So it's still a mechanical cable that puts the gearbox in and out, um, but it's controlled by a solenoid inside the engine bay. Um, so that's basically that system. So it's interesting to see it because people very rarely see it with the drives off. Right, I think though, that's all we, we need to see down here. So we'll pop back up and we'll watch Andrew show you around the cockpit. Okay, so let's start off on the transom of the boat. Now, this particular boat, Beneteau GT Flyer 38, has got a teak laid ba bathing platform. It's in really, really nice condition. Um, the teak runs then all the way through. And something that's quite nice on this, most teak has got borders around it. And actually, I think it actually looks a bit more modern not to have the borders. Um, it's a different design and I quite like it. So this teak is obviously in very nice condition. It's being looked after here at Port Solent Marina by Clive Hook, and it's all very, very nicely presented. In terms of usability on the bathing platform, you have side access on both sides to get up onto um, the side. In fact, what I'll do is I'll just grab the camera and we'll just do a little walk down the side here. So the side access is good all the way along. Um, now, although you haven't got um, grab handles, you can easily just touch, grab in here um, where the roof is. So actually it's a nice, safe and easy place to walk through. I quite like the fact you've got some design here going on to the side steps, it's sort of scalloped round and then you've got space here to have your bow cushions and a couple of drinks holders and space here. Hopefully you can still hear me, there's quite a lot of wind here at Port Solent today. As we walk further forward you've got a nice delta anchor and then this is of course an electric windless controls and if I open up in here you can see access and a nice um, an anchor keep there and then a mixture of rope and also anchor chain in there. So I'll clip that down again. If we move back you can see um, a good sized sunbathing area and this really really big windscreen. This is what gives such great visibility and then in fact we've got Jonathan here pretending to drive it at the helm position. In fact it's a good it's a good place to be here. This shows you the central helm position, which is really, really nice. So I move the camera into the middle here. You can see if you want to be driving a boat, actually being in the middle of a boat is very much the best place to be. Really good. Do, you know, do you know what this, do you know why it's really good? Go on, Jonathan. Because normally if you're sat here, 
Which you would be, wouldn't you? You're more onto the side. See this pillar? Yep. It's really in your vision. So it's just off centre, and you can get that with a lot of boats. There's a lot of motorboats, you get this pillar and they're always in the way. But as soon as you get to the middle, your view widens. So it feels even bigger than it is, it's nice. So, so your field of view when you're going along, you can actually widen and there's not so much of a, um, and there's no so much of a blind spot. That's the issue, because you get a blind spot from the pillar sometimes. And as it widens here, you've got a much wider field of view. Um, so actually being in the middle makes a lot of sense. Nice. Right, well, let's go back round. These nice side steps, they're not too deep, nice and easy to step down and back here onto the back of the main platform. Um, you can see there is a 240 outlet here and you also have a shower, hot and cold shower on the transom as well as a transom bathing platform. Um, I'm trying to think of the word ladder there, ladder which then goes underneath the bathing platform. So as we step up inside, I'm going to pass the, the camera back to Jonathan. And the size of this area here is really, really large. So I think we always like to talk about how many people you could fit around this table. I think if you're friendly, what do you reckon? Eight people, ten people, including this side here. Yeah, so on the no, side, so, yeah. yeah. On the side here, you've got sort of a chaise long system, which is really nice for lounging. I can imagine laying down there, reading a book would be a really, really nice place. Um, while we're on this side, I just alert people. Something the French manufacturers seem to really think about is where you put your safety gear, and there's always seems to be good spaces for life rafts. And so inside here, there isn't one in there at the moment, but if you lift that up, you've got a really good sized locker that you could comfortably get a life raft into. Um, there's flares kept in there and spare ropes at the moment. In terms of the table design, at the moment we're in, I like to call this cocktail table design. So we've got a nice stainless steel grab hold here, so if you're walking forward, you've got something to grab hold of, and you've got a half size table. But if you just lift that out, you've now got a full size table. You don't need to pull anything out from underneath it because it just sits onto that stainless steel handle really, really nicely. And then what you can also do is you can spin this around. And what that does is it means the table moves a bit further across here. So it's perfect for dining, but it gives you more space for walking down on that side. So it's a really simple way of just spinning the table around to give additional space. They've used a lot of space very, very well, and of course, when it's turned around, you can drop this into a sun pad position. Now, I think this would be amazing if you're on a lovely summer's day, um, being able to drop that down, put infill cushions in, have the chaise long over there, you're pretty much converting the whole of the back of the boat into a sun pad area, which is absolutely brilliant. I'd love bobbing around in somewhere like Colwell Bay, all spread out here after a nice lunch at the hut. I'm just there to say what I'd like to do now. Anyway, some people like to do that. Um, Lots and lots of little areas where they've thought about things. So there's a fire extinguisher, which is, you, which is just inside this space here. Initially, I thought that would be quite difficult to get out of, but actually the bracket is, is mounted in the right way. So you just grab it and lift it straight out of there. So some nice, good safety features as well. And then, of course, where I talked earlier about where this boat is quite different from the, the competitors is up in this upper helm area. And in fact, Jonathan and I said earlier, this, this feels a bit like a playground ride. You know those right the playground, um, what do you call them? Not oh, fairground rides. Yeah, roller coasters, fairground rides. If you're sat here, you know you have those bars that come down and sort of trap you in. I think this is brilliant. If you're in a rough, heavy sea, you've got a really good grab hold there, but it sort of feels like it's going to come across and trap you in. It doesn't, I quickly add. Um, but the light coming through this sunroof is absolutely fantastic. It's really, really a nice wide opening. It's all electronic, so it just closes at the touch of a button. And of course, if you want to get extra um, wind through here, you can just open these sides. The thing I love about hardtop boats is they just make this sort of boating very much an all year round boating. So in the middle of January, if you want to take this boat out, keep everything closed, put the um, Wabasto heating on, and this would heat up really, really nicely. And you've got a boat that you can use all year round. These boats are substantial assets people buy. Why not use them for 12 months a year, not just six? So that's the, um, the passenger position. Then you've got a dual helm position here. Again, you've got nice seating position. You've got a stainless steel bar where you can rest your feet and all of your controls are really nice and handy. You've got Volvo Penta, the very latest Volvo Penta um, displays here. So that displays all your diagnostic readings, your fuel flows, etc. You've got a good sized Simrad plotter, which is also fitted with an AIS um, trans, uh, well, say it's a receiver. I'm not sure if it's a transceiver, but it's certainly a receiver um, because you've got the different um, boats that are um, in the marina just flagging up there. 
and then all of these latest D-series dials and your switches close at hand, together with a Simrad VHF just here. And then Jonathan referred to it earlier, this joystick control is just here. Now I've not actually used a joystick control, control much, Jonathan's used um, them a few times on IPS drives and they work very, very effectively. But it'd be interesting when we go out on this boat on sea trials just to see um, how easy it is to manoeuvre in, in short spaces. Um, I know the person that we've recently sold a, a Juno NC14 to had one of these boats on a joystick control and he said he wouldn't have another boat without it. It's quite interesting there, but you do also have the bow thruster. So that's pretty much it in the helm position, just something I have noticed. I'm not sure if this is standard or something the owner has added on, um, which is just this little step. If you wanted to put that step there, um, your, your head height would then just get that little bit higher, which would give you access to look forward. So that's nice. A couple more things in the cockpit space. You have a ceramic hob in here. So basically call it a barbecue, a ceramic hob. Um, that's on there so you can cook up your burgers, your bre fried breakfast in the morning. That's a really nice feature. Hot and cold running water. You've got a fridge in here. You can open that up. It's a nice size fridge. And then quite usefully in this cupboard here, you have a bin. So everywhere throughout this boat, it's got some really nice storage features. And in fact, down below, I think the storage is easily compa comparable with a 40 plus footer. So close that back up again. I think that's it done for the cockpit. Let's head downstairs and show you a bit more of the boat. Okay, so I'm downstairs in the boat at the moment. Jonathan is up in the cockpit and Jonathan is going to show now how the cockpit door opens. It's quite a nice natty little design here. So you just open the door up and then push this slider right the way around. And I'll show you in a minute that that slider then goes right up into the roof space. So. Hello, I'm down here. Oh, and sorry. in terms of the roof space, if we just look up for a second, it would have been so, so easy for Beneteau just to have had fiberglass, just to have had, uh, close this in. But actually by utilizing um, a piece of glass there, it makes this cabin space feel much, much bigger than it would do normally. So I really like that. And I have to say, when you walk down on this boat, it does feel like a really big boat. It feels very fresh, very modern. Um, I like the fact you've got a television, which is mounted up here. Um, you've got a good size sink, you've got a three, a burner induction hob here and this boat is also fitted with an inverter we haven't seen the size of the inverter to know whether or not it could run um, the induction hob so that's the to be confirmed we'll add that onto the listings but lots and lots of um, good size space you've got a bin just in here which is a nice opening bin and then the usual cupboards um, for utensils in terms of the design you've got a big fridge in here that's in vent mode at the moment I always get these around the wrong way Just, they just pull it, pull both sides at the same time. Not sure how I didn't manage to do that. Um, so you've got a good sized fridge and that's what I like to see, a fridge which is stocked with some beer as well. Close that up and it's nice just to conceal the fridge behind in there. So let's start off with the front cabin. Now the front cabin, in fact, what I'll do is let me take this here and I'll just show inside the front. The front cabin has got these really nice cut out windows on either side and the blinds, you've got reading lights at the back and then you've got two really good sized cupboards. One cupboard just on this side and another cupboard on this side and then a vent at the top which of course can be closed up as a blind. You've got good standing space in the front here so you could easily get changed in the front there um, and you've got locker space under the cupboard, under the um, bed there as well. So a very nice size main master cabin on this boat. We haven't looked at the seating here yet, have we? We haven't yet. As I close that up, I'll come and sit down here. You've got a very nice um, leather effect. Um, it's, a it's a light colour, you see white, just off, off white, it's fairly white. Um, white colour leather, too, yeah. looks pretty white. Um, effect, you've got cupboards which run all the way down here. You've got these blinds which I think give a really nice modern feel. And then two round portholes. What well, I think round portholes, it's sort of a hark back to a, a, go a golden age of boating. boating. It is proper boating, well, round, round portholes. Port we like that, round portholes. Um, then you've got controls at the end where you've got a fusion head unit control. You've also got a Pioneer CD player, so you've got the options if you you've got old CDs, um, you can use the CDs in the Pioneer, and then you've got the Fusion for Bluetooth, and then underneath you've got one of those trusty Webasto controls where you can heat the boat up nicely for those cooler evenings or winter boating, as I mentioned earlier. Um, this table that is just here as well, oh, so, oh you, should you do the control panel? You seem to be sweeping to the control panel. Well, I was just, obviously I was just showing the, um, the Simrad. Yep. 
section here because this has actually got a iPad, oh, um, an iPod in it. Sorry, so it's got an iPod in it which um, will work up at the Simrad system. I'm assuming. Oh, uh, got you. So you'll be able to control that from the chart plotter. Yeah, yeah. So you can control you, it. Are you struggling to open that, though, Jonathan? I'm a little bit. <laughs> Trust me, there's one in there. It's a little bit. So yeah, so there's actually an old. There's an iPod in here. We're, we're gonna not going to sell that with the boat, though. I think the owner will probably keep his iPod, but lots of people have got those kicking around in, in cupboards. Yeah, it's nice absolutely. to put so many, so much music it just sitting in that system. That's a nice um, design. We've got all electrical switches for the main batteries. It's always nice to have them to hand, um, as well as, obviously, you've got your main 240 switches, but also there's a nice digital display which displays your current um, voltage for your domestic voltage, so you can keep an eye if you're not on shore power. Um, and there's also, you can check your water level for um, in the tanks as well. Um, so it shows you your water level as well, um, as well as there are positions for the 240 for the stove and inverter, as we say, we're not sure what size it is, and the 240 fridge. And the 240 fridge will also convert over to 12 um, when required. Perfect. Um, the this here, the table here, is also on a telescopic um, pole, so that can be dropped down. So if you are away um, with, let's say, two or even three families at the weekend and wanted to have perhaps children sleeping here, that will convert into a large double bed there as well. So in terms of accommodation, you've got a lovely sized master cabin. You've got accommodation here that can convert into a double. And then you have a very, very large rear cabin. So we go down into here. What's really nice is on a lot of boats, you enter this cabin off to one side and then look across. But because this boat, in the same way, it's got the center helm position, you've got this center access to this room. And it feels massive because it runs the whole width of the boat. You've got storage space in each of these locker spaces here. So there is an enormous amount of space. And you've also got access um, through the panel at the back, just that one there, uh, to get access to some of the pipe work as well. So not only have you got good storage for clothes, but you've also got easy access to some of the maintenance items on the boat. You've got reading lights on both sides, reading light there and there, and then you've got this extra step down which gives you that little bit more headroom height as you walk in. So it's a really good size here, and it's set up in quite a nice way that you've got two single berths, but actually without doing anything at all, you've got an enormous double bed there that is, I would say that's bigger than a Super King. So it's a really good size midships. I say midships cabin, it feels like a midships cabin, but it's a rear cabin on this boat. Um, as we come out again, oh. we've got Jonathan. <laughs> what are you doing in there, Jonathan? Do you want to talk us through the heads? <laughs> yes. Um, yes, I was just having a look in here because it's actually, it's a really nicely appointed um, heads in here. We've got, it's an electric seawater flush, but electric flush toilet, which goes into a holding tank built in behind here. Okay. And the holding tank is actually um, a gravity release one. So it doesn't use a macerator pump or anything like that. Um, it's basically all you do is open the sea, uh, the sea um, cock to it and it will then just go out to sea, it doesn't have to be pumped out. I think you had a, you had a Bavaria, didn't you, on that yeah. Bavaria, you had a similar system, I That's remember. It. And if you're offshore and you don't need it to go into the holding tank, you just leave that valve open and as you flush the toilet, it will just automatically go out. Nice. Um, but if you do want to use the holding tank, just close it off and then it will fill it up and then you can just let it go when you're out to sea or get it sucked out on the external pump out. Having that system seems to me that there's less to go wrong. I've got a, I have just have an in, I just don't like holding tanks. I know the reason for yeah. them, I know it's a great idea yeah, and you have to use them in marinas, but for me when they go wrong it's just a job nobody would ever want. So the, the simpler you can make a holding tank system, the better. No mass <laughs> but the only, the only pump Pumpage will be done by the toilet as normal into the holding tank, but the holding tank doesn't need to be pumped out, it just lets it go automatically. But, but it's a very nicely um, fitted out um, heads. Um, I like the shape of the sink on here. I do, so a modern feel, hasn't it? Yeah, that? and another porthole, which looks really good here because it fits really well. And of course, we've got a shower, and but look, I'm, I'm six foot, but I can barely touch the skylight. There's so much headroom in here, I don't think I've seen another boat recently with as much headroom as this. I mean, you could easily be seven foot tall mm. and still 
have plenty of headroom in here. Per perhaps, um, perhaps I shouldn't say this, but I've noticed up here you've got opaque glass. And something I noticed, we were on a um, Genoa yeah. Leader 9 yesterday, um, and it had a similar system where you had um, light above the shower, but you had to pull the blind across, and it did make me chuckle how many times you'll forget to pull the blind across, and your, your husband or wife will peer down at you as you're having well, a nice shower. Light, you might need the light <laughs> yeah, in here. Exactly. But you're putting that across for, um, for privacy, but yeah. you don't need to here. You just have that natural light all the time. Cupboards as well, but there's also a shower curtain with a rail, so it actually comes across and covers all this section. So if you wanted to have a shower, all this would be protected and you can stand here and, and have a shower. So actually it, work, it all works really well. Yes. So I'm going to pop myself back out. No worries. And I, I think this boat is, is just very nicely pointed. It's got a really good feel to it. So what I'm going to do now is literally just do that very, very quick tour around the boat in the next minute. So that's your front cabin. And then as we head back up into the cockpit space, we will go back into Jonathan's domain as Jonathan's going to take over and tell you a little bit more about these engines. But it gives you a really nice feel for the boat here. We can see this centre comp, this centre driving position we keep talking about. Big, big space at the back here. And then your engine access. We will go down into the engine bay now. We're just going to swap microphones with Jonathan because the sound can sometimes be a bit strange when we go down there. So I'm going to cut the camera off, but we're going to go down through this hatch and show you the engine bay. Well, thanks for that, Andrew. Um, really easy access to the engine. Just lift straight down. You can take the table off if you want it to come up a little bit higher, but it doesn't come up terribly, terribly high, um, higher than that. Um, but then there's actually a step down, so it's easy to get in here. Um, and then once you're down, um, there's masses of room round either side of the engine. And in fact, look, I can I can climb round here. I can get all the way around the side of the engine, which actually makes maintenance. There, <laughs> yeah, it makes it makes maintenance really easy. There's loads of room here. Are you almost tempted you could use it as a bit of storage? We always got to be careful not to get things caught um, on the moving parts of the engine. But Volvo have thought about this in this engine space because they've actually covered up the um, the the drive belts, and they and they you only use this when they know that place is going to be used for storage and then might end up leaning against the front of the engine. We should always stow things away nicely, but if ever anything comes free, we know that it's not going to come to too much harm. Now these um, 260 horsepower D4s um, are actually a really nice choice for this boat because of the stepped hull. Because of this aeration system, um, these become all the power you need. Because you, because a lot of people may think, well, maybe we should have D6 370s or something like this in here. But effectively, the, the stepped hull and the aeration um, effectively makes the boat um, hull and the friction um, a lot less than it should actually be um, for a normal dis um, planing boat. So actually, this is plenty of power. What it will give you is the best economy as well. Um, and I know if you're spending, you know, over £200,000 on a boat, maybe you're not thinking about economy, but people really do. Because if you keep a boat like this for a few years, you'll still get money back, but you've spent all that money on fuel. And in fact, economy is a big deal now with fuel prices. And um, I really feel these are perfect engines for this boat. And, uh, but this space is really nice. There's even a built-in, let me take that off you, Andrew. There's even a built-in heater. Um, for the winter months, so we don't have to worry too much um, about um, um, about the engines getting too cold over the winter. And again, through here, you've got access to water pumps, the hot water tank, and the fuel tanks. There's two, and they're actually made of plastic. Now, Genoa Benito um, use plastic tanks. Um, they're very good now from the point of view that you don't get condensation in them like you do on um, stainless steel or aluminium tanks and of course they don't corrode. Um, so they're very good and of course they're nice and light as well. And there's one other side and they do have a balance pipe. So if you fill one side um, it will balance with the other side or if you naturally use more on one tank than the other. Um, heating, for example, if you use a lot of heating and the level drops in one side, it can actually all balance itself constantly with the other. So you'll always have the same amount of fuel either side. But this engine room is fantastic. Very easy access to check the oils, um, very easy access to check the weed traps and just have a general look around the engines. And you always find the better conditioned engines are the ones that you can get at everything. So all in all, it's actually a really good space. Come back up again. Yeah, I'm going to pop back up. Just 
Right, yeah. And again, very easy. And really, when you want to do engine checks, it is all about easy access. And, um, and I think that is one of the easiest accesses and one of the best engine rooms that I've seen in a long time. Nice. Well, do you want to sum up the work, gentlemen? I've talked quite a lot on this video, so what are, what are your thoughts yeah. on this, this Beneteau Gran Turismo 38? Well, having not really looked round one properly, um, I was always, um, again, you know, you, everyone has this traditional feel about what a layout should be, but this really makes sense now we've looked round it. And having three helm seats, I think all in all, this boat is a great boat. It's a great opportunity to get what I can see as a very, very good condition boat for 10 years old. It's hard to believe it's not just two or three years old. And um, um, all in all, it's, um, I think it'd be a fantastic buy for somebody. And I'm actually quite jealous of whoever, whoever has it. It's got, it, it's got a really yeah. nice feel to it, this boat. And I talk about that a lot, but actually it feels very new. I also, I refer to things as like, whether they feel like they've just come from a boat show. And as you yeah. said, it's 10 years old, but actually, if you just said this had come from the Southampton boat show, you'd believe it. You would, it's, you would. It's in beautiful condition, very, very well maintained, and a lovely boat. And a great specification. Absolutely. I mean, we've got the joystick controls. It still has a bow thruster. Obviously, the, the twin engines. We've got radar on here as well um, on that Simrad system. Yeah, all in all, it's, um, it's a good spec. Great condition hull as well. Um, if you look at the hull now, um, you can see that it's in beautiful condition. Um, Clive Hook from Sea Hook um, Services has been looking after it. Um, and there's no blooming at all on this hull or any marks or scratches on it, it's in really nice condition, so the whole boat just looks beautiful. Right, so, um, thank you for watching another video from Park Owners Boat Sales. Um, and subscribe to our channel, come and see this for sale at parker-adams.co.uk and come and see all our other videos at Parker Adams Boat Sales on YouTube. Um, so, I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, so, it's goodbye from me, Jonathan Parker. And if I spin the camera around and say goodbye from me. So, thanks as always for watching and we'll see you in the next video. All the best.